All right, this meeting is being recorded. Hi, Beatty friends. I am Meredith Roddy from Beatalon. Welcome to today's class at the Michaels Community Classroom. I am so glad to be able to do these virtual classes for everybody. We're making new Beatty friends. We are learning new skills. I'm, um, I'm learning new skills. I always learn something new when I'm teaching other people. So thank you very, very much for joining me today. Today's class is Jewelry Making 107 in our Jewelry Making series from Beatalon. And we are going to be making a wrap bracelet with the tying station. And today's class is going to be a little bit different than the other classes. I think we're actually going to be able to do class from start to finish. Oftentimes in the very beginning, I give a little caveat and I say, this is kind of a, a watch and learn, maybe do a little bit of, um, of participation. But this class, I feel like, and I might regret my words, but I think that we'll be able to do it together. So if you have the materials from the list that, um, that Michael's sent out, and Yvette usually posts it right in the very beginning of the comments as well. Oh, and she just did that. See, we're, we're like right here, Yvette and I. She just um, posted the instructions and the materials list and everything for our class today. Now. I did mention we are at Jewelry Making 107 right now, which means we have done, is this our seventh class already? That's crazy. I feel like it's been a couple more, but I definitely recommend going back into the Michaels Community Classroom archives and looking back at all of the different classes that I've taught, but also all of the different classes that the amazing group of Michaels Makers has has been teaching. I have learned all kinds of new skills um, just from taking, uh, just from participating kind of as a worker even um, in some of these classes. And it's amazing that Michaels has provided this free content for all of us to learn from each other. So without further ado, I think we are, um, we are here. Everyone is ready to get started. And um, Raina, if you can flip my camera, for me, if you would be so kind, we'll get down to start talking about what we're actually making today. So I am I'm wearing actually the wrap bracelet that we are going to be making today. I've used a ladder stitch with um, for the technique and a very simple, as you will see, um, loop and button clasp. So if you haven't done any um, ladder stitch, if you haven't learned how to make a loop and button clasp, then you are in a good place because those are the things that I'm going to be teaching today. So let's talk about the materials and all of the things that we are going to need for this project. The tool that we're going to, to use, and you might not have seen this before, so let me introduce you to the tying station. And I'm going to talk a little bit more all about the tying station and what makes it so awesome and all the different things you can do with it as we're, as we're going through the class. The material that we are going to be stringing with is Belon. And I've done, I think I've done some other projects with the Belon. Um, this is one of my absolute favorite stringing materials. Um, it is a Tex 210 nylon beading cord. And this three pack of white, gray, and black is, um, is a great variety pack. And you can pick this up at your local Michaels. Um, this little piece right here is actually part of the tying station. So we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. I'm also going to be needing two collapsible eye needles. And I'm going to bring these way up close so you can see what a collapsible eye needle looks like. These are optional. You can actually um, do this whole project without the collapsible eye needles, but it does make it a little bit easier. So why not make our beading jobs easier if we can? So let's see, those are the materials. And then of course, we're going to need a pair of scissors. In terms of beads for this project, I used for the one on my wrist, let me bring, bring the camera down just a little bit more. These are six millimeter beads. For our demonstration today, I'm actually using eight millimeter beads. And I'm doing that for a couple of different reasons. The first of which is I always like to kind of bump up a size or two when I'm demonstrating um, because I think it makes it easier to see. Um, in case you're interested, these are the Agate Crackle Multis. 
and that is the part number right there. But everything is um, is mentioned in the instructions <clears throat> that that has posted in the comments section. I just I think that they're just really really fun, pretty beads. And even though we're about to start launching into all of the fall colors for classes, I'm holding on to summer. This is this is all about summer for me. Um, and I really, I just, I love the color combinations. So um, I also recommend using a couple of different sizes of seed beads for this project, because what we're going to be doing once we're getting started is we're going to gradually bump up our sizes. So we're going to start with a size eight seed bead, which is my favorite size, just, just as an FYI. We're going to bump up to a six. And that is where the instructions stop because we start with a six millimeter round in the instructions. Today, I'm, I'm going, going rogue and I'm actually going to use these size two um, seed beads. And these are all from John Bead and available at Michael's stores. Because what you need to do, and we're gonna learn this in a moment, is gradually increase this space. Um, mostly because it looks nicer, I think, um, but it's also functional as well. So form and function um, for gradually increasing this space. So let's see, we have our focal beads, we have our seed beads, we have our materials, our needles, and last but not least, these are fashion beads from Bead Landing. So they're polymer clay and it's a blue flower mix. And it's, there are these really fun multicolor, I guess two, two color, um, and with a little yellow beads, but they can also act as a button, right? Once you start diving around on, in the Michael's beading section, you can find some really, really cool things. And over the next couple of weeks and months, um, I found some of those really, really cool things um, that you might not have thought to use these beads as a, as a button class. So um, if you have or have not thought of using a bead um, like this as a button class, let me know in the comments. I would love to know if you've ever done this technique before. Okay, so I think we've, we've talked about all of our products. So let's get into it, right? I said that we'd be able to, um, to do this project around with me today. And I, I, I'm going to stand by that. At least one, um, one wraparound, maybe not two wraparounds, but we're going to, um, I'll do one full wraparound for our project for today. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to use the gray or the silver color um, of the Belon. We call it gray. I think it's a little bit silvery kind of colored. Um, from this multi-pack, you could use any of the colors. This is using the white color, so you can see you you will see as we go along um, how it changes. But I always like to when I am um, when I'm demonstrating go with something a little bit darker. I feel like, I hope that the gray will be a little bit easier for us all to see. So the first step is we have to figure out how much belon that we want for the middle part, okay? So we're gonna be talking about two different things in class today. We're going to be talking about the base chords and we are going to be talking about the working Chords. Okay, so everybody file that back in the back of your mind. We've got base chords and then we've got the working chords. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the length of our base chord. And the way that I like to do this is perhaps a little fast and fast and easy, um, but I just, I hold it here in my hand, I wrap it around my wrist twice, and then I double it. Okay, and you can feel free to gather a measuring device of some sort and, um, and use that and measure it out completely. You can also use one of the features of the tying station, which I'm now going to move to center stage. And let's see, I'm gonna bump that back just a little bit so we can see everything and yet still have it as close as we can. It's always a challenge with the tiling station because it's long this way. Um, and I really do need to work it like this. Let's, we'll, we'll play around with it and bring it up so that everybody can see what's going on. Um, but the tying station does have a 
ruler here. It's 10 inches along the side, which I really like because then I always know how long my bracelet is going to be, right? So let's measure this out roughly. We've got, oh my goodness, 10 inches and another 10 inches doubled. So this is about 40 inches, just give or take. And I always suggest using a little bit more material. Um, it's always better to have a little too much than not enough. And when you are working with Belon, this stuff is, is very relatively very inexpensive. So it is not a big deal to add a couple of extra inches here or there rather than um, rather than not having enough at the end. Okay, so let me move everything kind of back to even because we're not quite ready for the tying station yet because the first thing we're going to do, and I'm gonna take this off now so we can put it down for reference. So clear my workspace a little bit as well. The first thing we are going to do is this loop here. We're going to um, build our bracelet from the loop down to the button clasp. I'm, I'm pausing and I'm looking over because my dog has joined me down in the home studio and he is causing trouble. Okay, so we're building this part first and we're gonna build down and add our clasp next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 20 size eight seed beads. So we're gonna start with 20 size eights. And I thought that this blue color, let's see, these are, this is the aqua color. I thought that that complemented all of this color scheme, scheme really, really well. A little bit better than on my, um, on my original example. So the cool thing about Belon, and I'm gonna bring this camera down nice and tight. Oh, look at that close up, I love it. The cool thing about Belon is that you actually don't need a needle to thread it. So let's see if I can get in here and show you. Just like that. Okay. So you do not need a needle to thread it. The holes of those size eights are big enough and the end of the beelon is stiff enough that you don't need a needle. However, if you are the type of people, person who likes to use a needle, the collapsible eye needles are perfect for the Belon. So thread it in, pull it back. It kind of locks into place back here. I love when that focus comes in, it's so nice. And then, you know, why make things a little harder than you need to on yourself if you have um, collapsible eye needles, you can see how much faster you can pick up those size eights. So remember, we're making the loop part right here, and we're going to start with 20. And depending on how big or how small your button is, or your bead slash button is, will determine how many you string on. So let's see, I was not counting. Was anybody else counting? Two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, so we're gonna stop at 20. And um, I'm just going to loosely hold those together and check that it is going to fit over my button. And I think that that is going to be just fine. Um, maybe let's just for just for the sake of argument, let's add two more beads. Now you want your fit to be snug, but not too tight, um, and you want it to have wiggle room, but not be too loose. And I think for these particular size eight beads, 22 is gonna be a better measure than the 20. And you always wanna double check whenever, even though your pattern might call for a specific number, um, if you change your bead manufacturer, if you change your bead color sometimes, um, seed beads have 
it's the slightest variance and sometimes you can't even see it with the naked eye but you always want to double check that that loop is going to uh, is going to slide over your button without too much wiggle room okay so now there are many different ways of doing this project for today this is how we are going to do it um, if you do some searches, if you look for um, for different different instructors, can do this part in many different ways. But I figure that for the first time you um, you would do a project like this, let's keep it as easy as possible, right? And what we're going to do is we are going to take that loop and we are going just to tie a simple overhand knot, nothing fancy, no, you know, I don't know double overhand, triple Lundy, whatever kinds of knots that you might want to um, want to tie. We're just going overhand because um, sometimes the easiest is the best. Now, I like to use an awl. You don't have to for this step, but I find that, especially when I'm talking through instructions and paying attention to a lot of different things at once, um, there are different ways that you can tighten up that knot, this knot. This is mine. So again, I've used 22 of the size eight seed beads and just tied an overhand knot right here. Um, and yes, uh, so the one thing that I did not mention, I did it, but I didn't mention it specifically, is you want that loop to be right in the middle. Okay, so you're working, I'm sorry, your um, base cord, is going to be doubled and that loop is going to be at the very, very top. Okay. So I know that some people are making along with me today and that is very, very exciting. Um, and I think that the pace that I'm setting is going to be good for, um, for getting to the end of the project. Keep in mind that Michaels will post this video in usually about 24 to 48 hours and you'll be able to, um, to watch it over and over and over again um, and mute me out if you want to or listen to my, my silly jokes over and over again. So let's talk a little bit about the tying station. So let's see, I'm gonna put it like this for my discussion and bring it down close so everybody can really see what I'm talking about. So the tying station is made of acrylic so um, you don't want to um, to pack it in your luggage because it can it can snap. Um, so you just want to be be careful. It's not made out of I don't know something that is not going to snap if you put it in your luggage. I speak from experience. Um, and up here at the top, there is a wing nut that unscrews. My fingers are out of the way for it, and a base plate. Okay, going over kind of the, the vocabulary that I'm going to be talking about um, during, the, during our class. So there's a base plate here and that goes over this threaded screw. And this part actually comes out also. And then there's a base here. You don't actually never necessarily ever need to undo that part, um, but it does, it does undo and then go back together. Okay. So let me just, and I like to always leave my wing nuts at least loosely on because they do tend to run away from me. Okay, so then we talked about how there were measurements along the side and now down at the other end, give myself a little bit more room here. Um, there's another wing nut that unscrews and another base plate. And this plate actually um, moves slides up and down. Um, so if you if you are making something that's smaller, that's a very handy feature to have. I actually generally like keeping it as long um, as it goes um, because I'm almost always making bracelets that are wrap bracelets that are longer. So I need the longer amount. And that is where this handy dandy little guy comes in. And this is the extender plate. And the extender plate replaces up here and allows you to make a larger, longer bracelet. Okay, so I just went over a lot of words. Um, 
but they're I'm glad that they'll they'll be there in the um in the the recorded video so you can go back and kind of like what what is she talking about what was that base plate what was that extender extender part so since I have seed beads here I'm actually going to use this foam plate because if I accidentally tighten down on the seed beads they're glass so what's going to happen they're going to crack but if I come here and I just use the extender plate, since it's foamy and soft, it's not going, it's not going to crack those seed beads. So that's the next step to do. You want to put your loop, let me show that again so everybody knows what I'm doing. I put my loop over that threaded screw. Shush. Finn wants to say hi to everyone. And then I'm going to put that base plate over and hold it. So now I'm going to take, and this again, this is the, um, the B-Lon Tex 210. It's a nylon cord. You can do this with all different kinds of, um, of cords. You could do this with leather. You could do this with, gosh, I don't, I don't know. There's so many different materials that you could do this with. Um, and what I'm going to do also, just to show everybody, make sure I don't, not doing anything without telling you, I'm taking my collapsible eye needle and I am taking that off of my base cord because I'm going to use it for something else in just a second. So now what I'm going to do is I have these two and I keep saying base cords because they are, they are going to be our base cords. And I'm going to pull them straight down and I'm going to secure them on either side underneath. So let me just show you that one more time. Okay. So here I have my base plate and you don't have to take it out like this, but I want to do that so I can really show people what I'm doing. So you can actually see. So one cord is going to lay here on this side of the screw and the other cord is going to lay here on the other side of the screw. Okay. And then I'm going to use that base plate. I'm going to put it back on. And this is what is going to hold those, um, those base cords together. Now it doesn't have to be super tight like a, um, like a loom. It's really just acting like your hands to hold those, hold those cords in place. Okay. So now next step, we are rocking and rolling here. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a, I'm going to use that same VLAN cord and I'm going to pull out about eight feet. It's a long, a long length, but that's about what you're going to do to need if you are going to do a double wrapped bracelet. I, when I'm making wrapped bracelets, I don't like adding cord. I don't like having little knots in there. So I'm comfortable working with a longer cord of about eight feet because it gets, it gets short pretty quickly. Um, that is what you would need for this double wrapped bracelet because I'm doing, um, a shorter bracelet for our class today, because I think we're going to be able to actually finish together. Um, I'm going to take out five, five feet. So all I'm doing, and I'm going to do it, if you can see me um, on the me camera, I just pull out a wingspan. I have two measurements that I use mostly for beading. One is a wingspan, which is arm to arm, and one is a half of a wingspan, which is arm to shoulder. So some people, when they, um, when they do their beading, they're very specific. They want to you know, I need things to be four and seven eighths inch or, you know, or four and seven eighths feet, whatever it is. I'm very much more um, use a wingspan, use a wing or a half of a wingspan, or maybe it's two wingspans. All right. So now what I've done is I've taken that long length of Belon cord and I am placing it underneath the base cords. So this is the working cord or the working thread. These are the base cords. And I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. So now I'm going to bring my two ends together and I'm going to
move everything so that it's not not so that it catches on everything sorry about that guys um so that it is even right so my two ends are together and this part right here is right in the middle and i'm just going to um i'm going to tie an overhand knot to secure it and let's see i'm going to move that down just a little bit and i'm going to tie my knot and then i'm going to move my camera down a little bit more too so just an overhand knot just to secure it and let's get that nice and tight in the shot and i'm going to tighten that right underneath my overhand knot so the part that we're working on is this part right here so i have my loop which is hidden underneath there i have my knot and then i'm going to and this is where you can get as fancy or as um not fancy as you want. You can use different chords. You can use contrasting chords. You can do one knot. You can do 17 knots. Um, but we are, we're learning technique and project today. So once you learn the technique and how to do it, sky's the limit. All right. So I did my one half of my overhand knot, or now what I'm really doing is making a square knot. So people who have done macrame will recognize this as a square knot from macrame okay right over left left over right so i'm going to do one more so and we'll do a whole class um, on a macrame bracelet in a couple of weeks so um rest assured this this knot will be coming back to haunt you perhaps probably or or for fun Okay, so now this is when you get to make a choice. And once again, I'm gonna make my life and my teaching life easiest by putting one of those big eye, I'm sorry, collapsible eye needles on each end of the Belon cord. So these are collapsible eye needles and they are, it's exactly what it sounds like. They have a nice, big eye that is very easy to thread and you put your material through that eye bring it through a little bit and then give it a little tug and it captures it back in the twist of the needle there we go okay and this just be the it makes it a little bit easier to do this whole project when you have needles on. If you don't have collapsible eye needles, you can certainly, certainly, certainly just use the Belon. It is, um, it is fray resistant enough that you can actually do it without needing to, um, to have needles on. But I always say, why make it more complicated and more difficult? when you can do it, make it easier. And you can use, if you have big eye needles, you can do that. Um, and if you're doing this with a different cord, say I've done this technique with wildfire cord, then you can just use a regular hard needle. You don't need, um, you don't need any fancy needle. All right, so without getting ahead of myself, what we're going to do is we are going to take both ends of the working cord and we are going to bring them under the base cord and out to the side, okay? Under the base cord and out to the side. So you always wanna start your stitch because now we're starting to do our stitching. We're starting to build here this bracelet. You always wanna start with your threads coming out of the middle, okay? So we're going to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a size eight seed bead. And these are the size eight seed beads from John Bead that you can find in your Michaels store. Okay, so I just, I threaded that size eight onto one of the needles. Now I'm gonna take my other needle from my other working cord and I'm going to pass back through the opposite side. Okay, so I'm, and I'm gonna do this like, a gazillion times so just stay with me because i promise you will get it okay so i just strung this one bead on this way and now i'm going to take my other needle and i'm going to pass it back through that bead the 
other way. Okay, so watch what happens. One needle and thread is coming one way. One needle and thread is coming the other way. Trying my very best to keep this in the frame for everybody. And I'm pulling everything tight. So that bead now comes down and locks itself in between those two base threads. Okay, so you can see how happy that little bead is nestled in. And I think you can also see that if I started with that great big size eight or even the size six, it's just, it's not gonna look right in the beginning. There's really no other way of saying it. It's just, it's not gonna look right and it's not gonna sit right and nothing, nothing will be good. Okay, so let me put that right there so everybody can see where we're going. I always like to show where we're going. Okay, so now we just lock that first bead in place and we are going to bring those two needles once again underneath the base cord or the base thread and out to the sides, okay? So that's always the part that if I'm gonna forget something, that's the part that I'll forget, but it's very obvious when you do it um, that you need to, um, that it's not going to work. And I'll, and I'll show that, um, I'll kind of make some, some on purpose mistakes. All right, so let's see. Now I'm going to pull in a size eight, okay? So now I have a size eight seed bead and I'm gonna put that on my needle going in one direction. And it does not matter if you start on the left-hand side or you start on the right-hand side. It doesn't even matter if you're consistent with it. You just wanna make sure that you thread one needle through one way, one needle through the other way, and then pull. You don't wanna get anything caught or tangled up while you're doing it, but you wanna pull and tighten that up. So you can see now where the size eight seed bead created a space and now the size six seed bead has made that space a little bit wider. So now what we're doing is again, <laughs> back down through the middle. And this is where when I'm teaching, I'll get distracted and I'll forget to do that part, but I'm so far we're, we're three for three. Let's see how long it takes me to forget to do that part. So now I am going to use, I had never used a size two seed bead before. These guys are big. They're bigger than a six. They're bigger than a eight, of course. Um, I don't know. They're just, they're big seed beads, but they're really cool looking. And I happen to have the exact right color. So I, all, I, I, I always, I start my needle almost always on the right side, but again, you do not have to. You can start one on the left and one on the right. I think it's good to kind of get into a habit because then you get into a groove. Um, but that is, I, I, I allow personal, personal responsibility on that. Okay, so now I have a size eight, a size six, and that size two seed bead. And I think I am ready to start on those eight millimeter agates. So once again, much like in looming, when you reset your needle each time, um, it's, it's very similar to a looming technique, what we're doing. Um, but it's a, it's a ladder stitch is what it's called here. My little air quotes, a ladder stitch. It wouldn't be a, a class with Meredith if I didn't have my air quotes in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my semi-precious, Agate, I feel like, oh, here we go. Agate craft will multi. I just like when it comes into focus like that. <laughs> and I'm gonna cut them apart. Um, and I like to leave my beads on, um, on a bead mat. I'm using this nice mat here. Um, I have a, an actual bead mat um, on my working tray to the side over here. I just, I find that um, it's just, it, the beads don't, don't roll away. That's really all there is to it, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to do that same step that we did before, and we're going to do it with these really fun eight millimeter agate beads. So I'm coming through one way here, and then back the other way. And I am going to pull this tight. 
So now that we are here with the agate beads, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to show over and over again until we all can get it or, or until I get to, to the seven, whichever comes first. Um, and hopefully people will be able to understand what's going on. So this is the part to really go back and watch over and over again. Now, now we get into the meat of things. This is, this is all of the setup. Now we're doing our ladder stitch. So once again, we're going to take our needles and we're going to do the reset, okay? So um, up through the center on one side and up through the center on the other side. Now you can use the colorway right as it comes off of the strand or you can mix and match and figure out what colorway you like the best. For example, I culled out the black beads from my bracelet because I didn't want, I just, I didn't want, well, I think I probably ran out of them by, at the end, so I have a couple down here, but I wanted it to be more vibrant with a color. So we've got our eight millimeter bead and I'm just, I'm putting it on the needle on my right side, okay? So it's just needled up onto that beelon cord, okay? So next step I'm going to do, I'm picking up the needle on the left-hand side. And I'm taking that needle back through the bead. Okay, so the thread is coming out one side and I'm coming back through with the needle and I'm wondering, it feels like this bead is drilled um, a little, a little off on the inside. I did get it through, but you could see I was kind of trying to, to push it through. Um, but it, it eventually went through, just sometimes in the drilling process. Um, it's a good thing to know when you're using beads not to get frustrated, to just kind of, um, you know, poke around in there until you get the, until you get it right. Okay, so I'm pulling down tight and that one's coming into place. So it might be helpful to think of your thread direction like my fingers right here. One is going this way, and one is going this way, and then they're pulling together, okay? So what, I'm, what I'll do is I'll do a couple more close up, and then I'm gonna pull back, because this actually, this technique uses a big space. So it's always a challenge when you're trying to teach something, do you show something in the small space, or do you show something in the big space, right? So here, and it also might be helpful if I show my needles like this, right? So this needle is coming this way and this needle is going back that way. But I don't like to cross the needles in the beads. With these beads, it's not that big of a deal, but sometimes beads have smaller holes. And so the thickness of the needles might be a challenge for those bead holes. For these eight millimeter agates, not, not such a big deal, but I don't know, I feel like you wanna, you wanna get into good beading habits early on, um, and then, then you can start, start being naughty afterwards. All right, so one of the things that I would love to mention that I haven't had an opportunity to do yet is to talk about one of my favorite benefits of the tying station. And that is this space right here. So it will become more evident when we are doing a more of the nodding part. But I really like that the, um, the time station has this space here so that I, you can get your, um, get your fingers under and around your project. It's also very helpful for doing the in the in in and under and around part that you're doing when you do the reset of each of the beads. Finn, did you bring me Legos? You have got to stop eating the Legos. We are rebuilding the Millennium Falcon in my <laughs> in my basement and my golden retriever has decided that they feel good when he um, when he nibbles on them so he is a he's being a naughty noodle this afternoon one of the great joys of working from home but also one of the great challenges from working from home is um, usually he is sleeping under at my feet but he's feeling a little feisty this afternoon maybe because it was raining here um, where i am 
and now it is a beautiful day. All right, so let, let's go over that a couple more times. We're going to go one way with one bead and one way with another bead. Now, I love the tying station for doing this project. I think it makes it, it makes it easier to do this specific technique. There are other tools um, in, that exist in the marketplace and in the world where you, that you could use to do a project like this. Because really, all you need is a way to secure your top, secure your bottom, and have a working space in between. So when I was, in my youth, when I would make bracelets like this, macrame bracelets, um, or, or what have you, um, I used a clipboard or a safety pin on my pants. And that was just fine for me when I was a kid. It is much better for me now to actually use a tool that holds things in place and does it in a way that, um, that makes it easier. I'm always looking for tools and ways to make things easier for me to do my beading. And this, the tying station is one. Another tool that you could use for this would be a, um, a loom. So there are different ways to set up this technique on a loom. Um, you can actually also use the tying station to do some loomed work, but that's a different, different discussion for a different day. So I think that you would be able, it would be a little bit different. Um, I haven't actually done this technique using a beading loom, but I can't imagine that it would be so difficult to, um, to do with a beading loom. <laughs> Finn the golden retriever just got banished. He was he was not helping me teach. <laughs> not helping me teach. I think sometimes um, he he gets he get he knows that he can't have my attention when I'm doing the um, the live videos, but he really really wants it. So as I'm going down here, I can see that I am at about the four and three quarters mark. For my wrist, for this technique, I usually need to take it to about the seven. So we're going to do a couple more of the beads. And again, just on one side and then back through the other side. And you can see why using these collapsible eye, um, these collapsible eye needles are so good. Um, like I said, you, it can be done without them because sometimes I either can't find the needles or I don't have them or they're being used for another project. Um, so in a pinch, you can actually get some the Bilan um, Tex 210 nylon cord back through the beads. But again, if you don't, if you don't need to, why make, why make things more difficult, right? We have so, things are difficult enough <laughs> without making our beating more difficult. That's supposed to be more fun, relaxing, um, fun. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So I'm, I'm not following any kind of a pattern um, with my beads here. Um, and I have a couple more that I think I can get long enough without having to dive into those black beads because I love the black beads, right? But just not for this project. So I think with these five right here, and then I have two for a pair of earrings for a different project. Um, and speaking of projects, as I'm going along and doing this, each Wednesday, um, we are going to, Beadalon and Michaels, be showcasing a learning project here in the Michaels Community Classroom. And I am furiously <laughs> putting together um, my classes right now. We have, we have classes posted through the 2nd of September right now. We're going to be doing a mask necklace class on the 2nd of September. 
And then before that is a really fun um, bracelet uh, using wire and the coiling gizmo. So if you haven't signed up for those classes yet, please go ahead um, and do that in the Michaels Community Classroom. Join me again. Um, I believe our time is switching to two o'clock Eastern time on Wednesdays. So we had been doing one o'clock Eastern time on Wednesdays and we're, we're bumping down an hour. Um, so you get to see uh, highly caffeinated Meredith <laughs> instead of needing to be caffeinated Meredith so no promises on whether that's better or not better but I do know that we have some really great projects coming up that I'm really very very excited about um, and let's see so I'm coming to the end and this is where this is where we have to pay some attention okay and luckily, I have done all of my um, all of my wraps on my ladder stitch the right way down. And so now, what I need to do is to backtrack my size two seed bead, my size eight seed bead. I'm sorry, my size two, my size six, and my size eight seed bead, and then my knots here. Okay. So let's see. We're coming up on seven inches. So I think this is going to be just fine um, for, for my length. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to figure out for your length um, what makes sense for you. Do you want an eight inch bracelet? Do you want a seven inch bracelet? Do you want a seven and a half inch bracelet? Do you want it to be loose? Do you want it to be... Um, Tight, um, all different kinds of things that you have to think about when you are figuring out how long you want your bracelet to be. And that's one of the things that I struggle with the most. I'm very good at sizing bracelets for my wrist, but when it comes to sizing it for somebody else's wrist, I generally do an adjustable kind of a closure um, because I never want the bracelet that I make for somebody else to be too big or too small, right? You want it to fit them. Um, so we'll be doing, actually, we'll be doing uh, several adjustable closure clasps um, coming up. So let me back that out because I am switching to different beads. Um, and here I just randomly started on the left-hand side. Just to show you that you can start on the left-hand side, you can start on the right-hand side. The important thing is that you're passing your needle back through the bead one way, one way, and one way the other way, just like that. Okay. So I've got that one done, and now I'm going to go ahead and do my size eight. And if you don't have all of these sizes of seed beads, that's okay, too. Um, I just, I like the way that it looks when you're bringing the, um, the sizes together. You, you, you could, if you don't have the seed beads, you could just go from large to small. I just, I like, I like how it looks. And so that's how I do it. So now it's time for my size six seed beads. So once again, and isn't that funny that for the seed beads, for some reason, my brain switched to starting on the left-hand side. Does, your, does that happen to you ever? Like you're doing one technique one way and then all of a sudden it switches. Um, so once again through the center and my last my last bead is going to be a size eight seed bead and here i went back to the right again so who knows who knows all right so one side and one side and pull that tight and so now we can breathe a sigh of relief because we have finished the beading portion now, if I wanted to make this a wrap bracelet, right, like I did here, and go around more than one time, and you can do this, gosh, three times, four times, five times, as many times as you can, as you can handle, right, or as many beads as you have. Um, and to do that, what you would do is actually, once you reach the end and you don't have any more room anymore, you would move this up and then the beads come underneath here. That's why this foam insert is so important because it allows you to move your whole piece up and place it under there and hold it in place. And now 
none of this needs to be vice grip, um, smush down, break beads kinds of holding, really just enough so that you're, it's acting like a third or a fourth hand to keep everything in place. So now what I like to do, even though these needles are really not very sharp, I like to remove them from my beeline and set them aside because these collapsible eye needles always seem to wander off on me. And so I like to try to keep them together and in a place where I will be able to find them again. Okay, so now this part is where we do our ending. So in the instructions, I suggest flipping the bracelet over because what we're gonna be doing is working on the back side. And it's just, it's just a little bit, again, just a little bit easier to do it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this up and just slide these off, okay? And I'm going to take the top off as well. And I'm just gonna flip everything over. Okay. So we're just going to flip everything over so that I'm now working on the back side. Um, but what I also want to show is you don't necessarily need to use this here if you can be trusted, and sometimes I can't, to just tighten this up enough that it's not going, oops, Let's actually watch what I'm doing instead of looking at the comments <laughs> um, so that it's not going to smush those beads because you don't you cracked beads makes me make me very, very sad. So we don't want we don't want cracked beads. So all I've done is I've just flipped it over. So I was working on one side and now I'm working on the other side and you'll see why in just a second. So once again, I'm taking one cord on one side and one cord on the other. So you can see you don't actually need to take that plate the whole way off. You can just tighten that down. And again, we're not death gripping anything here. So move that up just a little bit. So we have a little bit more in the frame. And I'm actually changing my mind. I'm going to move it right back down again so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but I wanted to bop it up for a second. So now what we're doing is we're going to do those same square macrame knots that we did in the very beginning. And we're going to do them on the bottom. Okay, and that's why I flipped it over because now my threads are on the back so I can do my, my knots on the top. Otherwise, I would be doing my knots on the back and you wouldn't really be able to reach them very, very comfortably. So just like we did before, a macrame knot. So I'm gonna slow that down actually um, and really show you what I'm doing. So I make, I always learned that you make a four I'm coming down. I'm coming close, guys. We're going in. Okay. So you, you make a four and then you take the end and the end comes underneath all of those cords and through that circle. But you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to do this part too. So let's, let's take that back a step. It's not with this one. It's with this one. Okay, remember I was talking about the coffee? Okay, so you make the four here and you take the other, the other cord, I was doing a different kind of knot, underneath all of those and through the center. And the thing that I like about macrame knots also is if you don't do the knot right, it becomes very obvious very quickly. So I tighten that up right underneath that bead so you can see how nicely we go from the eight millimeter to the smaller seed beads and then everything tightens together. And we're gonna do that same one on the other side, okay? So we're gonna do that right there. And with our other working thread, we're gonna come under everything and back up through that center part. Okay, and like I said, I've got on the on the docket a whole bracelet <laughs> using this technique. So after you've practiced your ladder stitch over and over again, 
um, you're going to get really good at the macrame part in, um, I think, come the mid to, middle to late September. We'll have to see, see how that goes. And so since I did four, or it's really two whole square knots right here in the beginning, and then opened it up, and then we come down here, and we're gonna do the same thing right on the bottom. I'm going to now stop. And I'm going to do two things. Well, maybe three things. I'm gonna back that up just a little bit. Then I'm going to loosen this, the bottom off. I'm going to take the top and I'm actually going to take this opportunity just to show what I would do if I were making this into a much longer wrap bracelet that was, you know, two or three times around. Okay. So let's say, just pretend this is a whole long strand, right? And I've reached the bottom and now I'm ready to move it up. So what I would do is I would move it up probably about to there, right? So then I'm going to have all of this space. And that's where this foam insert comes in handy again, because you just put it right over like that. Because what ends up happening, I'm very fiddly with um, wing nuts. There are a lot of things that I'm very good at, but getting wing nuts on the first time is not one of them, <laughs> right? That is one of the things that I struggle with is wing nuts. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna hold that down and tighten it up in place. There we go. Oh my gosh, third time's the charm, right? And I was probably like this the whole time, right? So you couldn't even see what I was doing. <laughs> I apologize. I don't know. Wing nuts are my, are my kryptonite. But you can see now that it's being held in place with this foam insert. The beads are underneath. They're not going to crack because I haven't put, the, put so much pressure on this that the beads um, are going to break. And then they get held in place for me to do the whole rest of my necklace. So now I think we are done with the time station portion of our presentation. So now the only thing that's left for us is to add the clasp, right? So we tested in the beginning to make sure that our loop of seed beads went over the clasp. And so now we're going to add that clasp. And these are these really cool, um, they're called fashion beads um, and they're made out of polymer clay, which is really cool. Um, and they come, there are two colors that come on the strand, a darker blue and a lighter blue. And I just, I love how the lighter blue and actually the darker blue really works well too. But since I did that color there, we're gonna choose the lighter blue. And this is, Again, we're just going to easy peasy adding the clasp. So I have about a foot of Belon left over after all was said and done. But remember, I was actually doing this as a um, double wrap bracelet. So to make my life easier, I'm going to trim my ends to about six inches because I don't want anything to get knotted or tangled um, in, the, in, the, in the doing of this. So when I first did this, I was able to get the belon through the hole in these beads. But you can see it's a little, it's a little clogged just because of the way that, um, that the manufacturing of these beads is. So once again, I am going to make my job easier rather than harder. And I'm going to use a big eye beading needle. I'm sorry, I keep saying big eye beading needle. I mean collapsible eye beading needle. You can use a big eye beading needle. Um, I just happen to A, have, and B, like better, the collapsible eye for this project. So I put two of the Belon strands through with fingers cro crossed that they will both go through and indeed they do. So now all I need to do is to knot together these two and these two. 
And I'm going to do that with, um, with actually with a surgeon's knot. So this is a bonus for you. I did say a square knot in the instructions. We'll do a square knot. Let's, let's keep with the instructions. We're not going rogue. I've already done that once in, in this presentation. So we're going to tie right over left. And then actually, you know what I want to do? Hmm. No, we're going to tie left over right. I'm sorry. I said right over left and then left over right into a square knot. And you can do a couple of different things with this square knot in order to ensure that it is going to have some nice longevity. My favorite thing to do is to trim and seal the ends with a thread zapper, um, which you can also find in your local Michael's store. So um, the, um, the thread zapper is, it gets very, very hot here at the tip. So you wanna be very, very careful. Um, and really you should be wearing your safety glasses. Um, it is also very easy to burn out the batteries and burn out your tool by holding this red button down too long. So what you really wanna do is, and it, it takes a little practice and a little finessing, but this is like the greatest tool ever. You wanna hold down the, um, the button so that you see how it's starting to smoke so that it warms up and you're kind you're not kind of you are trimming and sealing these ends okay but i don't have that red button held down the whole time i'm holding it up to heat it up and then i'm backing off that button um, it's one of the things that i always teach in classes because um, I see people have a tendency to hold that down and burn it out. It's more of a, um, it's more of a, of a kind of heat than back off than heat than back off kind of a thing. But the threads app um, is a great, great tool. Um, also found like everything else in your local Michael store. So now this is the part that always makes me nervous is did I do it right? <laughs> is my, is my loop perfect? And indeed it is. And I do have a fairly small wrist. So I think that this is going to fit me just perfectly. So here we are, one wrap around, just a really pretty fun, simple, once you get the hang of it, summer bracelet. So that is our class for today. Um, Rena, if you could take the front camera as the as the major camera so I can say goodbye and thank you to everybody. So gosh, we went over a lot of stuff today. We learned how to use the time station. We talked all about how to do the ladder stitch. We even learned a little bit at the very end about the thread zap. We learned how to use the collapsible eye needles for, um, for making our beading lives easier when we're doing um, when we're doing stringing, and our next class will be a week from today. And instead of one o'clock Eastern time, we are going to be. Oh wait, I take that back. That starts in September next week. One o'clock um, Eastern time will be our next class, and you can sign up for that in the Michaels Community Classroom. And again, I very much encourage everybody to go back through those archives. There are some fabulous, all, all of them are fabulous in their own right classes that amazing makers have done um, throughout the entire um, time that Michaels has been gracious enough to offer all of these free classes. And I'm just so grateful to be able to be a part of it. So thank you everybody so very much for joining me today. And until next time, happy beating.